let's say if a stack continues to create the moisture, let's say um, the stack stays too cold, maybe it's oversized for our appliance. Oversizing the stack, that appliance doesn't give off enough heat to, to heat that vent stack and the, the condensation occurs in the stack and we can get dripping and uh, you'll see a white trail sometimes from type B vent. You'll see a white trail coming out the seams and that white trail is condensate happening inside the stack. Uh, the condensation can cause deterioration of some metals because uh, it's, it forms carbonic acid. The uh, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are absorbed into the moisture and carbonic acid is the result. Uh, of course, there'll be traces of these two as well, but depending on the composition of the gas. But for the most part, it's carbonic acid. And it can erode drains on the floor if you get a lot of condensation in your boiler. Uh, the pH is very acidic, uh, between 3 and 4, typically. <clears throat> this is a, an egg stack that had lots of condensation in it. It's a galvanized sheet metal stack, and carbonic acid is very corrosive to it. So once you see things like this, your system is compromised and people could be seriously hurt or killed. Um, and that's this, this stack system is an integral part of any appliance. It's uh, an important part of that appliance. So um, we can minimize condensation in a couple of ways. You can make the stack warmer. We could send more heat up the stack and, and have a less efficient appliance, which is not very desirable. Um, or we can keep our appliance on for a long period of time. So if our appliance comes on and runs for 60 seconds and turns off for 60 seconds and back on, called short cycling, the stack will never get hot and it will always cool these products of combustion and you'll always have condensation and you could have a problem like this. It could happen in an oversized boiler, for example. If the boiler's way too big for the load, that's bad. Uh, and the boiler will short cycle because there's no place for the heat to go. I, sometimes I get stuck on one slide. So dew point at wet time, I've mentioned dew point. I think we understand uh, dew point is the uh, temperature at which the moisture can drop out of that uh, solution. And wet time, any stack, any cold stack, when you first light a boiler on it, is going to get some moisture in it. And that wet time is designed into the system. If the boiler stays on long enough, if the stack is properly sized, the heat will heat the stack up and, and keep the moisture in the flue gases until it leaves the system. But that wet time is, is, is normal. It's, it has to happen. It's physics. Just when a cold stack, when an appliance starts on a cold stack. Okay, so this condensate that we have, uh, because boilers now we have our condensing boilers, right? We want them to condense because a boiler is more efficient when it's condensing. Is there something magical about a condensing boiler? No. It is a boiler that's designed to handle that condensation. That's it. Any boiler can condense. If you put cool enough water on its inlet, that boiler will condense. If the boiler can't tolerate that, the boiler is gone in six months. It's done. It needs expensive repairs. So for boilers that we, we do have condensation figured in, we have neutralizers. Um, uh, magnesium hydroxide is the, is the latest and greatest uh, rather than the limestone and there's a good article by uh, JJM Boiler Works that talks about that. But that's beyond the scope of this presentation to make sure I can keep it in under three hours. Um, draft is the chimney effect, simply put, that's what draft is. Uh, natural draft relies solely on the heat coming off of the appliance. In a natural draft appliance, it'll be a category one vent. You would use type B vent. Are these terms familiar to people in the room? Everyone? Yeah? Good. Not everyone, but a few. Um, with, with the increase in efficiency, uh, a natural draft appliance is no more efficient. I'm, I'm going to specifically say boilers. 83% efficiency is the absolute maximum you can have on a natural draft appliance. The 17% has to be left over to make sure the flue system works. So when we talk about appliances or boilers that are higher than 83%, we're probably talking about forced draft, a fan that propels the flue products out and we don't rely on natural draft to do that. Okay, uh, gravity vent, right, priming time. Um, so has anyone ever gone to a cabin in the winter 
and you want to light a fire in the condominium or something, and you might, um, you might light a, a, a tube of paper on fire and heat the, heat the chimney up. You prime the chimney. That's what, that's what we're talking about with priming. And once you get that draft established, then you can have a, a fire. If you just light a big fire with no draft established or with the draft damper closed, your condo fills with smoke. So they tell me I've never been that stupid. Yes, I have. Um, and then finally we had to crack the, crack the sliding door to let enough air into the room to keep the fire going because of our fire triangle. But anyway, um, natural draft of plants. So um, natural draft is created by warm air rising. I know you guys are engineers, so I'm not going to spend any time on that. <laughs>